Hello everyone, this is Powell Ponder on Weather. In this update, we've got a massive storm coming that includes tornadoes, damaging winds, and some large hail, along with some heavy snow. So we'll break down who all gets what in this update ahead. Good afternoon, everyone. This is your March 27th update. It's actually my son's 14th birthday today, so we'll be celebrating that. But we got a lot to talk about. We'll break all this down for you. Let's take a look at the overall satellite picture and you can definitely see there's much colder air up here in the upper Midwest and along the Great Lakes off this Northwest flow on this satellite picture, they're experiencing some, actually some freezing conditions and some of these areas into the Great Lakes won't even actually get above freezing uh, today, but it's a different story out West into the desert Southwest where they're actually experiencing some record high temperatures, but we've got a pretty significant trough that's gonna be entering uh, parts of the west coast here and you can actually see this little swirl that's off the off the coast of california right now that is going to be the culprit of our severe weather threat coming in for tuesday wednesday and thursday time frame but in the meantime it's going to bring some much needed rain into portions of california over today and tomorrow and so you can take a look at the overall high resolution guidance as we get into kind of the overnight hours as that little trough that's going to be coming off the west coast is going to be entering into parts of uh, california with some much needed rain in portions of eureka and to uh, sacramento here into san jose and a lot of that actually will filter down into southern california into los angeles as well as san diego with like a half inch and inch to rain down there but out here you can actually see the northwest flow off here along the Great Lakes and those are winter weather advisories and winter storm warnings along the lakes here where they could be picking up some pretty healthy totals especially some of those lake enhanced induced snowfalls and then as well as up in portions of the mountain regions in West Virginia but there's going to be much colder air that's going to be coming in off the off the northwest flow here as our kind of a our last polar vortex split enters the that portion of the u.s and brings well below average temperature anomalies for the next several days but out here off the, off california they're bringing some much and welcome needed rain we're talking about possibly at least at least a tenth of an inch in eureka you back down get into a redding about a quarter of an inch but yeah look at some of these totals which is nice of almost an inch of rain in sacramento california these are places that are started off to their fort you know the 40th dry you know the driest start in like 40 years so i mean this is definitely some welcome rain into santa santa rosa here into san francisco about a half inch san jose yeah so definitely you can actually see even some you know parts of northern california right around a quarter to a half even a parts of an inch of rain but once you filter down into southern california yeah, into Oxnard, about an inch of rain. Look at Los Angeles. That's an inch and a half, guys. This is for Sunday and Monday time frame, but all the way down into San Diego, about an inch of rain. So even into portions of Las Vegas, where they've hit 93 degrees yesterday, they're going to be picking up actually a little bit of rain showers. So, hey, that anytime you talk about rain at, out here in the West, especially with the La Nina, that is definitely much needed because they'll take anything and everything they get to help with the drought situation uh, out there. But that same system will continue to be on the move. And by the time we get into that Tuesday afternoon time frame, you can definitely see this upper trough digs into portions of Texas, into Oklahoma, into Kansas. It starts to go, you know, kind of positively, almost a little, little negatively tilted uh, trough. That's gonna bring some of the lift up in the atmosphere. And as we get into the late evening hours, into the overnight hours on wednesday i think storms are going to be starting to erupt off the dry line because you start to get some of your cape values start hitting over that thousand parameter mark on your you know your convective available potential energy into portions of west texas and to north texas get it into portions of oklahoma as well as uh, kansas here well i do think uh, storms are going to be forming off the dry line and move into uh, cross over North Texas into uh, central Oklahoma and central Kansas into the overnight hours. So it is going to be looks to be an overnight setup and the Storm Prediction Center for day three. Now, this is your Tuesday night into the overnight hours on Wednesday time frame. So right now they do have a slight risk for severe weather 
all the way extending down into uh, San Diego, going into Fort Smith, Arkansas, extending all the way up into uh, Des Moines, Iowa here. But here's kind of your bullseye in the middle where they do have that slight risk for severe weather where I think storms are gonna be forming off the dry line. Here in West Texas and say the, the big country area near Abilene, and that's gonna be pushing into uh, portions of North Texas and to central Oklahoma as we get into the overnight hours. So all those areas in Wichita Falls and to Lawton and to Ada and to Norman, Oklahoma City, as well as further up to the north into Topeka, I think you're gonna be seeing storms start to erupt into the overnight hours with a pretty nasty squall line that's gonna be coming across. These squall lines are typically your highest risk or your damaging winds. And some of these areas within the squall line could pick up you know, some bow segments of 60 to 70 mile per hour wind gas is definitely not out of the question. Typically with that squall line, a lot of the hail that you'll see is your kind of your pocket change type size hail, but with embedded supercells, you can get some of that larger hail that was quarter size hail or potentially even up to ping pong size hail in some of those isolated areas. And they do have an inst you do have a little bit of instability aloft where you could see a, an isolated tornado or two, but the main threat with the with the Southern Plains setup is gonna be your damaging winds, and then you have the, the, the large hail, and then you have the uh, kind of a, an isolated or a possibly a few tornadoes is likely into the overnight hours, but it is an overnight setup. So typically that's a little bit less severe and it's kind of a more of a, a damaging wind threat with that nasty squall line as it moves through. But you can definitely see to the north, that's where the cold air is gonna be in place. And underneath that cold air, that's where the snow is gonna be breaking out into portions of the Dakotas. And even into getting into uh, Minnesota here, some of that could be changing over to kind of a freezing rain or a sleet icy mix into portions of Minnesota, getting into Wisconsin, as well as uh, Michigan, as we kind of get into the overnight hours on your Wednesday uh, time frame. But as we get into deeper into Wednesday, I think that's when things change in a big way, because you can actually see on the 500 millibar, about 15,000 feet up in the atmosphere, this trough actually goes negatively tilted. And that's the most significant uh, updraft potential. And so as we get into uh, East Texas, and as we get into Louisiana, going into uh, Arizona here, yeah, especially in the over, uh, into the uh, the daytime hours, that's a different beast, guys. Now we're talking a, a, a kind of a more or less a daytime setup versus an overnight setup. So you got a lot more heat in the atmosphere to work with. And then at the same time, these winds are going to be traveling anywhere from 90 to 110 knots up about 15,000 feet southwest winds. And then you let the lower levels about 850, about 5,000 feet up in the atmosphere. You got a lot of shear changing directions from the south and southeast side. So that's going to be traveling, you know, where around 50 to 65 knots. So that's where the rotation is going to be starting to set up into portions of Louisiana, get into Arkansas, going into Mississippi, as well as uh, Western uh, Tennessee, going into the daytime hours on that Tuesday, uh, Wednesday time frame. And especially as we get deeper into that three, four, five, six o'clock time frame, I think that's when things really start to ramp up, unfortunately, on the tornado front. And some of these indications, this could be potentially a tornado outbreak as we get into that Wednesday uh, time frame. Because we look at some of the parameters we kind of look at. You're looking at some of these dew points we start to elevate as we get into that four o'clock in the afternoon time frame on Wednesday, March the 30th. Yeah, so when you're starting seeing dew points around 70 degrees down here in uh, southern Louisiana, mid 60s, that's definitely concerning. That's plenty of fuel uh, to fuel these uh, thunderstorms as these continue to erupt and rise higher in the atmosphere. And also the significant tornado parameter index is starting to hit pretty high, especially as we get into that noon time frame, heading into uh, Louisiana, and that just continues to shift into portions of Arkansas and to Mississippi as we get deeper into the afternoon. And the latest, uh, you know, kind of your helicity index too, favors a lot of shear in the atmosphere, a lot, a lot more cape to contend with, a lot more higher dew point, a little bit more moisture in the atmosphere. And so, yeah, some of these areas could be picking up some fairly significant, if not strong tornadoes 
uh, by then. So let's just click on a sounding here off Greenville, uh, Miss Mississippi here. And if you take a look at that sounding and yeah, with that nasty meat hook on that uh, photograph here, that would be a significant tornado. And we're already seeing numerous areas on these soundings indicating that PDS tornado criteria. That is that EF2 type tornado. That's that strong tornado potential. And yeah, so we got much, we don't really have much uh, uh, cap in the atmosphere. We got plenty of plenty of capes. So that would be a pretty significant sounding. And especially as we get into that four o'clock, the peak heating of the afternoon, we're getting we're starting to see more numerous uh, amounts of these soundings kind of popping up in around the Louisiana, Arkansas, get into Mississippi, into portions of Western Tennessee area. And that's why the Storm Prediction Center has already enhanced and, and, and put this into an enhanced risk even this far out. So there, yes, this is definitely could be a significant event. So as these systems come out of Dallas on, on and, and from Oklahoma into the overnight hours on Wednesday, it goes into uh, East East Texas and the portions of Lufkin's under a slight risk, getting into Shreveport, all the way down into uh, New Orleans. And that extends into De uh, Paducah, as well as uh, Memphis, Tennessee, for that slight risk criteria, as well as Birmingham, Alabama. But kind of you get into that bullseye, into that enhanced risk, where I think these areas where that have that enhanced risk are gonna be highlighting those areas within that peak heating of the day so going into monroe into bigsburg uh there's greenville mississippi that's that tornadic set sounding that i kind of showed you in the earlier frame uh so yeah this whole area would be under the gun and be a little bit more susceptible to seeing some of those strong tornadoes and unfortunately we, we might be looking at a tornado outbreak as we get closer uh to this event and i would probably expect a portion of this to be upgraded to a moderate risk as we get closer uh, to the event time frame. So as we get, extend the view into your Thursday time frame, that same system continues uh, to push off into the east and it's still fairly, it's still looking fairly impressive by then as we get into portions of North Carolina, getting into Virginia, kind of get it in along the east coast here as we get into the deeper in the daytime hours on on went a Thursday and yeah even this far out this is rare for this area this part of the country to see uh, a, a, even a slight risk issued this far out in these areas and this was actually expanded uh, as of yesterday so heading into Philadelphia getting into Baltimore into DC heading up to Virginia Beach along uh, North Carolina this whole area could be under the gun for a severe threat and i would expect this to be expanded as well as we get deeper and closer uh, to this event by thursday time frame but there's the setup on the surface map with this low pressure right here about a thousand two millibars producing those showers and thunderstorms and some of those could be on the severe side as we get deeper into the afternoon on thursday and just to the northwest of there there's the cold side and so that snowstorm is going to be really starting to crank into portions of iowa especially as you get into minnesota here and up upper portions of wisconsin getting into southern portions of canada where it's got a lot of cold air to contend with 15 to 20 degrees below average temperatures with that pretty significant 978 millibar low pressure just to the northwest of there. You could be picking up some pretty healthy snowfall totals just on the northwest side of that low pressure. And as we continue into your April Fool's, you know, April 1st timeframe on Friday, that system will continue to push off into Friday morning along the east coast. I think once it gets closer up into the northeast, I think yes, we're, we'll be starting to get more of that you know day uh, that morning t hour time frame. So I think the severe threat starts to come kind of come down or kind of lose its luster a little bit, especially the further north you go. But on the back side, we'll still have that snow showers kind of ringing out on the back side of of that system. And then there's your kind of expected snowfall totals on the blend of the models for between now and the next week. So we do get those snows in the Intermountain West, but just to the Northwest of these, of that low pressure system, we could be picking up an inch or two in portions 
of uh, Nebraska, getting into the Dakotas, especially as we get into Iowa, a little bit more healthier totals as we get into Minnesota and to Wisconsin, especially along the upper Great Lakes here with even some double digit totals is definitely not out of the question. And then you got that more or less lake enhanced induced snowfalls up here into the upper elevations along the lakes here into portions of uh, Pennsylvania, getting into New York and upper portions, Vermont and New Hampshire, getting into Maine here with that uh, snow that's gonna be breaking out on the back side of that system. And there's your rain amounts for the next week. So we got that atmospheric river continue to play off a little bit, but these troughs are gonna be coming down, especially the one that's hitting Sunday and Monday with bringing those healthier totals into California and that brings even a little bit of rain into Nevada, getting into the desert southwest of Arizona. Uh, I think Phoenix hit 96 degrees. So these rain showers are gonna be really a cool respite uh, for them down here in the desert southwest where they're bone dry. Now that same trough hits the Southern Plains and starts activating off the dry line. So we start picking up some little bit higher totals as we get into portions of North Texas, Central Texas, and Central parts of Kansas here. But then your one inch amounts spread into Missouri and to uh, Illinois. And with that same system continues, and a lot of this is gonna be in the form of snow up here into Wisconsin and to, into Michigan. But on the Southern flank here, where the, a lot of the severe weather is going to be, we could be looking at some multi-inch totals up here in this neck of the woods into portions of the Dixie Alley area. And then as we extend further into portions of the Mid-Atlantic, as well as the Northeast, a little bit lighter totals of a half inch to possibly an inch over, over the next week as these systems uh, come across. So, hey, I appreciate you guys uh, watching. Do like this video and definitely leave your comments below. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel to catch the latest update where I protect you before and after the storm.